Welcome to Cold Brew Chats. I'm excited to be joined today by one of our Team Infinite athletes. He's been running consistently for about 25 years and competing in triathlon for 20 years. He's worked his way into the top one to 5% across all three disciplines individually, and he's the head coach of Input Output. Please help me welcome local triathlete, Matt Gervais to the show today. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thanks. No worries, thanks for being here. So I wanna get right into it today um, with you and triathlon, kind of take us back to the roots there. When did that start or how did that start? Just walk us through that process. Uh, well, I guess I got into running first, um, really young. My dad was a runner, so I started running uh, kind of just to keep up with him. I'd go with him to races and stuff like that. But at the same time, I was, I was swimming. I was really interested in cycling. Uh, I was doing some long stuff, like real young, um, uh, maybe 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. I was already running 10 Ks and uh, I'd ridden my bike to Chatham with an uncle a couple of times. Uh, and I enjoyed swimming too, but triathlon was, it was still like, I mean, that's 25, more than 25 years ago. So triathlon was still really new at the time. And locally there were just a really small group that were doing it. Um, the Hawaii Ironman, I guess, was some inspiration to like, you know, maybe one day that'll be me. Maybe, maybe sometime I'll actually be able to complete a, a full Ironman. But it wasn't until I think I was 16 years old that mm -hmm. I actually attempted my first triathlon, which went horribly. But uh, I was kind of hooked at that point. And um, yeah, I guess the rest is history. Uh, the long stuff always suited me and uh, I gravitated right to that. So yeah, first marathon was... I was 20 when I did my first marathon, uh, so um, almost 20, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my first Ironman was 15 years ago, and 2005 was my first Ironman. So, yeah, it's been that's a, great. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, though. It's cool. But so I know, just even you saying it's been a while. Um, I know with that comes some setbacks, and definitely too with endurance kind of training and racing. So, what are some obstacles that you've had to overcome throughout the years? Uh, I guess the biggest one would be injury, of course. Uh, I've had some chronic ones, like I've had some Achilles issues, back issues, things that just keep showing up. I've had a couple of bike crashes too that set me back. So I guess remaining focused yet uh, making sure that, uh, <laughs> yeah, making sure I get proper recovery and, um, you know, I don't rush back into it too soon uh, mm -hmm. from an injury because there's always next season, there's always another race, um, you know, we'll always come out of this. So um, I guess that's one of the biggest setbacks. Uh, a lot of people also run into like overtraining or, or lack of motivation over time. And um, I've been there too. Uh, we're trying to stay focused in the dark winter months and stuff like that. You just kind of lose focus. And before you know it, you're, you're a month or six weeks behind where you had expected to be or want to be in terms of your training. So yeah, those are some of the biggest setbacks. And I, I've, I've, I guess every year I suffer some kind of injury and I end up overcoming it. Um, but I don't have any real tips other than, other than trying to remain focused and uh, know that you're going to come out of it. And if you do all the right things, then you can come out stronger than, than you were before. So. Right. So, right. So, yeah, in terms yeah. of the, terms I like what you said about the motivation. So how, so you know, how exactly, you know, how exactly do you come out of it or what have you done? What have you like done? What has worked, like what for, has you? worked for you? Uh, honestly, we're fortunate in the area to have um, a really strong local presence in endurance sports. So like in triathlon and cycling and in running, there's some really great people and really great groups and teams. So to follow along and like stay in, in, kind of uh, the, the crowd and um, like see what other people are doing and, and know that, you know, you're still part of that group. And, and if you remain focused on your recovery and do those right things, don't, don't overwork or over like hurt yourself again, then uh, you're going to come out of it on the other side. And, um, and hopefully if you do things right, you could, like I say, you could be stronger than, than you were before. Like I've had injuries where I couldn't run, but that means that I can focus on my bike, which I've always has always kind of been a weakness for me in the multi-sport on the multi-sport side. So, um, 
yeah, I can, I can just focus on, okay, well, now's my chance to get these numbers a little bit better. When I come out of this, then uh, I'll be able to keep up with that guy on the bike and my run will come around because it, it always does. So, I don't know. I guess, I guess that's the main thing. That's what I meant by that. Yeah, no. So just yeah, kind of, no, yeah, changing, so that, kind of, mindset yeah, changing even, that mindset, even, seeing the positive, seeing the positive out, of it. out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, awesome. So I know you so are know a coach you for track and field, for track and field, but also mm-hmm. for but triathlon. Also for triathlon. So let's talk about so that. What let's talk got about you into that. coaching. What got you into coaching. Uh, originally, I guess, like right after university, I still wanted to be around the sport and giving back to the sport. I, w- I participated in, um, like, with various track clubs and cross country teams. Uh, so I started with just helping out with the high school teams and then with some of the local clubs. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed giving back. I liked helping and watching other people succeed, uh, especially the younger generation. Um, so yeah, that's why I guess I, and I knew right away, that's what I was going to do. I knew when I, when I'm done competing, it'll be all about coaching because, uh, yeah, I also enjoy the science of it and like following a plan and I like that structure and stuff like that. But I knew I wanted to give back. I, I took a lot from my coaches when I was young. Like I, I got a lot of, uh, a lot of support, a lot of motivation, a lot of just like, they were just, you know, instrumental to my like love for the sport that will last much longer because I had that support back then. So I knew I wanted to get into coaching and then that turned into triathlon coaching just because, you know, probably, I don't know, 10 to 12 years ago, uh, we just kind of started our own little, group uh that i would set up workouts and we'd kind of do some runs in my area and then that turned into okay well how about can you plan the rest of my season or plan the rest of my my week or whatever i have this race coming up what should i do now and then you know i started analyzing what other people were doing um and uh yeah i guess i really took um pleasure in helping others succeed and uh reach their goals and stuff like that and and that remains I get so much so much uh joy and satisfaction out of like helping somebody in their first triathlon 10th triathlon Mm -hmm. qualifying for Boston or whatever it is it's awesome like I I love that that's awesome that's really great so that's really that obviously is your input output output that you're talking about about. yeah yeah okay great and in terms of that in terms of that you mentioned mentioned you've had great coaches um, throughout your years um, so so, like how have you adopted um, adopted, um, your coaching philosophy philosophy. you know like what how exactly do you coach exactly do you coach uh well I mean I've been doing this a long time so it started just with like this is what's worked for me like Mm -hmm. you know my experience not just with how to train but also mindset and like I said like getting through setbacks and and then with nutrition or whatever, like I'm not, I'm not Mr. Nutrition myself. Like infinite mm-hmm. is the only thing that I know that I'm doing right, to be honest, <laughs> uh, when it comes to nutrition. But uh, yeah, I don't know, like things that have worked for me, but then also coming to the realization that things that worked for me 20 years ago don't work for me now. So maybe there's people that um, would respond better to the things I'm doing now, even though they're 20 years younger than me in the sport. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, I feel like I've, uh, I've evolved um, in the way that I've done things over time, but there's ways I used to do things that work for people now and ways I do things now that work for people now. Uh, but then, of course, there's all the, all the education and stuff like that, too, that I've kind of, you know, just adapted uh, to uh, other people's philosophies and things like that over the years, too. And once you just, once all that knowledge comes in, you kind of create your own Right. No, that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And also, I think too, with a lot of athletes, athletes, it's individual. Individual. Right. Everyone. Right. Everyone's differently. Yeah. 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 Um, And that's the uh, same with nutrition. And that's why. That's why. I mean, Infinite spoke to me right away with when Darcy got Infinite. Like it was like, well, this is like how could there be one thing that works for everybody so this is amazing this is perfect yeah so right well that right. kind of leads, well, into, the leads part. into the so part so your relationship, so your relationship with infinite with infinite um tell yeah. us a bit about tell it maybe what products it. you use what you like about it so much uh sure yeah like so i guess i began using infinite right in the earliest of 
years that Darcy took it on, but I don't know, what, honestly, I don't know for sure the dates. I know <laughs> in 2000, maybe 2006 or mm-hmm. something, or no, maybe not that long ago, maybe seven, six or seven, I don't know. I know mm-hmm. Darcy and I did Ironman Florida in 2008 together, and that was the first time I had done a race purely on uh, like infinite, liquid nutrition, mm-hmm. infinite was 2008. But anyway, um, I knew Darcy before. Uh, we had done some training together and racing together, and uh, um, when he took on infinite and kind of explained to me what it was all about, it was, it seemed like a no brainer to me. Like I, not only did I want to start using it, I wanted to be part of it. Uh, I wanted to help him. I wanted to help him succeed. I wanted to help him. I mean, with the company, but I, I also just, I believed in it so much that I wanted to make sure everyone here knew about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's, that was the big thing for me. Um, so anyway, yeah, that, so that goes back right to the beginning, I think. And I've been using it ever since. Um, my, main thing i've been on kind of the same custom formula tweaked a little bit um up to maybe like five years ago uh but then for the last like five straight years my custom has been um i think pretty steadily the same i haven't adjusted it at all i think that's really working well for me over anything anything longer than two hours i guess i'm using custom and and if i'm doing more than two workouts in a day then sometimes if my first workout is under two hours, I'll use my custom as well because it's like high, like I'm a really heavy sweater. I also suffer from cramps. So I've got high electrolytes, okay. high calories, high carbs. Um, and everything, like everything's kind of endurance based. I'm mm-hmm. running a little bit faster than I used to, but, mm-hmm. uh, and then, um, I've been starting my day with cold brew a lot and sometimes I'll use cold brew as my recovery, but I also have repair too, that I use a lot mm-hmm. as recovery just cause, um, for the higher, carbohydrate and stuff like that especially if i'm doing a second workout in the day um and then my wife and i have always sworn by jet fuel too the jet fuel is what we take to the pool for our pool workouts uh short workouts on the bike um i have that in my bottle on the treadmill yeah for running so uh yeah yeah i think that's everything i use okay so that's a lot (laughs) yeah no that's great and i know uh you said before i mean nutrition hasn't always been your strongest suit but you feel like you're doing something right with infinite. So what, what is it exactly about the products? Like what, you know, what do you love so much about it that you keep going back to it? Uh, well, I've always suffered from cramping over like mm-hmm. long stuff. Um, I couldn't get to the end of a marathon without cramping. Iron Man, I cramped before I even started the run. <laughs> uh, so I think once I really dialed in the infinite, um, uh, the cramping, I mean, I still, I still cramp because I'm a cramper, but not (laughs) nearly as much. Uh, I can get through it. And also like one of the biggest things is I can really, I can stomach it and I still like it by the end of the day. Like when you're out for eight hour days and seven hour days and stuff like that, where you got a long bike and then, then a run after the worst thing is just like having to just choke down more sweet, like whatever. So the -hmm. fact that, the fact that I can have all that, the electrolytes in there and everything that I need, but also I still like the flavor um, mm-hmm. because I dial down the sweetness and, and all that gotcha. is, is huge, right? Mm-hmm. But being able to stomach it too over a long period of time and still being able to run on it and everything and know that I've got that many calories in there and I can still, like, I don't, uh, I don't need to be taking in all kinds of solid food and stuff that I know I won't be able to run on. Right, yeah, right. It's, it's, it's nice and it's good to always have that in the back of my mind that I know this I know I can just keep taking this in and still feel good like I, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna get bloated and I'm not gonna feel like I want to stop and go brush my teeth or something <laughs> like, yeah yeah no that's great awesome um so you did touch a little bit on training so I want to talk about that a bit more what does uh what does training look like for you or maybe even now uh during these times kind of what have you been up to how have you had to adapt or change things Yeah, I mean, a typical week during a regular season would be week in, week out would look almost the same, depending on what period of training we're in and how mm-hmm. far out from the race we are. But um, now with no racing, uh, I think myself and most of the people I'm training or training with are kind of adopting uh, kind of the same same sort of focus, I guess. And that's that's keeping keeping some kind of focus where we can go out and do like do it just for fun and i think that's very cool that everybody's still like it's not just the olympians that are that are training hard through this it's the people that like 
you know, have one or two A races a year and might be middle of the pack finishers or, or just age groupers looking for, um, you know, podium spots or something like that. But everyone seems to be able to stay motivated through like these intrinsic kind of, um, like I, I've been feeling really good at the end of a long ride on the weekend and I want to continue to feel good. So let's continue to work towards these big endurance rides and I'll make a goal of a 200 kilometer ride eight weeks in the future. And that'll be my focus. So right. whatever, but, um, mm -hmm. maintenance of all three disciplines has been pretty solid since we've been able to get into the lake. So mm -hmm. some of it has just gone into maintenance mode, not making sure to not overtrain, still enjoy it, go just for the pure enjoyment. Like I have usually some kind of focus in most of what I do. Like I, um, even recovery workouts, I'll make sure like, okay, my, I'm going to recover for this long and then do some strides after if it's a run or I'll do some cadence stuff if, if it's a bike. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just find that that helps like remain focused too, that there's a purpose to what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I just have kind of one more question here. I'll break it up into a few pieces for you. Um, but really it's just about, I mean, you've com been competing for a while. So things that you've learned um, over the years, we're going to start with nutrition. I know you said, you know, it's still not your strong suit, but what's some advice you could give to someone listening here that you've learned along the way that they might, um, you know, might be helpful to them. I, I guess like, yeah, I, I'm still not, perfect with nutrition of course and especially in my day-to-day -day, like nutrition but during races I think uh, and training I think I'm getting a lot closer to what works for me I wouldn't really share everything that works for me simply because I know that it's it it's worked for me over trial and error over so many years I the first uh the first few years that I was doing Ironman I had th this is way before training peaks and, and you know, all this cool stuff we have now. And, uh, um, like my wife now, uh, and, and I, at the time we used, uh, just, we would write everything in training diaries, training logs, and I would always write down everything I ate. So mm -hmm. if I had a good day, I would write down absolutely everything by the hour, by the minute, what mm -hmm. I ate during the workout, during the, the long day or whatever, and, and as well as what I ate for breakfast and all those things. And, over the years and, and, and over time, I've found something that I, I am pretty certain is working for me. <laughs> uh, so I guess as a nutrition tip, it's just record everything and take advice from all, like there's an insane amount of local knowledge. There's, there's people that like, there's just um, so much history in the mm -hmm. area of people that have been doing exactly what, what whatever your goal is if you're new in the area whatever your goal is there's somebody here that's already accomplished that goal like there are mm -hmm. amazing people here so Great. like acquire any knowledge that you can and mm -hmm. use those tips but then make it your own like record everything write it down figure out what works that's my right. nutrition yeah. yeah and then uh so the other tip is going to be in regards to training so you can talk about the actual physical um side of things or the kind of mental side of the sport Either way, if you want to touch both, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I've already kind of touched on both already. Like mm -hmm. for the mental side, it's like the, the setbacks are a big thing, right? So remaining focused and, and uh, like during this time, remember why you're out there doing it. Like most of us aren't, you know, getting a paycheck out of this. Most of us aren't winning Olympic medals. So remember that you're doing it because you like it. And right now, without any races on the schedule, um, just focus on like those, those little weaknesses and things like that and make it, make it so that like you remember why you're out there. Like I'm doing this because I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. You get up in the morning, if you're not having fun, then don't do it. But like maintaining that focus and coming up with some kind of motivation is what keeps us going. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then with the training aspect, it's the same thing. Like um, just focus. Like if, you know, you can't be fit to race every weekend and know you're not going to have your best weekend every weekend. So mm -hmm. remain focused on what is the goal and just work towards that goal. Uh, right. So periodization, getting on a program, all those things. Don't think that you can just do the same thing every day and get better by doing that. Right. Right. It's kind of a constant learning process, it seems like, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Always be open minded, too, to the new things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, is there anything else that you want to touch on that you didn't talk about yet? 
Uh, geez, no, I don't know. I guess just <laughs> thanks good. a lot for, uh, yeah, wanting to speak with me. <laughs> Thank you for being here.